Okay, in this video now, we're going to move on from the distribution of the sample mean to the distribution of the sample proportion. And again, we'll try to describe that sampling distribution, how our proportions distributed, and then compute some probabilities. Okay, so here's the idea. I'm going to start with just an example. Um, I love basketball, so I put in some looked at some data on uh, Candace Parker, who was originally from Naperville. I believe she, uh, I made this slide last year, but I think she's still playing for LA in the WNBA. And her free throw percentage, which is after you get fouled, you get to shoot with no one guarding you. She typically makes about 80% of her free throws. So if we count the number of baskets that she makes, think about what the distribution would be if she shoots 10 baskets. How many would we expect? And then would there be more or less than that? In, same thing for 20 or 50. So if you look at the, think about those distributions, you'd expect her to make 80% of them. And then there's some distribution, sometimes she'd make more, sometimes she'd make less. So if we look at these distributions, uh, if she too shoots 10 free throws, we'd expect her to make 8, sometimes more, sometimes less. If she shoots 20, we'd expect her to make 16, sometimes more, sometimes less. And the same thing for 50, we'd expect her to make 40. If you look at these means, that's what we'd expect. Now you'll notice if you look closely, it's possible for her to only make five here. That's unlikely, but it's possible. There's a probability of, I don't know, whatever that is. It's, so it's not, not going to happen every time, but it's possible. And so it's a little left skewed. By the time, though, you get up to shoot 50 free throws, it's almost like a perfect bell-shaped curve. And that is actually not coincidence. This happens pretty consistently, and there's some actual criteria that we can use. So there's a key idea is that as the sample size increases, the distribution of this binomial random variable, either she makes it or she doesn't, becomes approximately normal. Um, there's a little asterisk there for increases. Here it's not that the sample size is 50, that, or sorry, the sample size is 30. That's not going to cut it here. Um, the criteria here is that if you take n times p times 1 minus p, if that is at least 10, then the binomial random variable will be approximately normal. And it, it can't be exactly normal because it's, it's um, discrete, right? It's, it's just counting. So it, it can't be, well, I clicked on it again, it can't be perfectly normal because there are the, always going to be little ridges because it can only be 35, 36, 37 but it can be approximately normal. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a subtle transition, and we're going to say, okay, instead of looking at this binomial random variable and counting the number of made free throws, let's consider what proportion of the baskets we would expect her to make. So let's divide all these by 50, and we get a graph that looks identical, except instead of the horizontal axis is number of made free throws. The horizontal axis is the proportion of free throws made. And the mean, well, the average proportion made is what we would expect, 80%. Sometimes she'll make more, sometimes she'll make less, but most of the time she will make 80% of her free throws out of 50. And so what we have now is we can get a distribution of this sample proportion. This one is a little bit trickier than the mean if that one wasn't challenging enough, that sigma over square root of n. So the mean, there's some conditions here, I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, the mean of the sample proportion is population proportion. The standard deviation is this formula right here. It actually comes from the variance of the binomial distribution, um, but it's one of those formulas that just like the other one that, I don't know, I just didn't see a lot of value in us deriving it. So I'm just going to give you these formulas um, here in, in the video um, and ask you to, I'm gonna, you're going to be expected to memorize these moving forward, but um, we're not going to derive where they come from. Uh, there's two conditions in order for us to be able to hold, is that our sample has to be less than or equal to 5% of the population, uh, and there's some theory behind why that has to be. We're going to kind of wave our hands at that at this level. That's okay, but we're just going to say we can't have the whole population and answer this because then we don't really have a sample proportion. Uh, and then the second condition where that binomial is approximately normal, so that, that's our second condition. Those are the two second conditions. 
just a little side note here, my philosophy on exam questions is when I'm doing the notes here, I'm going to check those things um, when I'm doing the video, but on a test, I will either explicitly ask you to check those. Is the distribution blah 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 approximately normal? Can I use these formulas? And then if I do ask you a question about calculating probabilities, you can assume that you can you don't need to check those things. You can just assume they're good. Um, that's just a little too tedious to do on every test question. So here's an example. Um, a couple of years ago, I did a class project in one of my other stats classes, um, and they were talking about students eating, um, how much time they spent eating. It's really interesting. So one research project that we found was that um, we were looking at how many students um, eat alone. And I just realized, let a little pause, a little weird distracting, a little typo there. How much time do Americans send on food? Oops. Um, so 27% of American adults, even though they live in a multi-person household, actually eat alone. So let's ask this question. If we have a sample of 150 ECC students, and I guess we should assume here that they also live in multi-person households. So they're similar. They're American adults living in multi-person households. Would it be unusual if less than 20% of them ate alone? I mean, obviously, if we have a sample of 150, we'd expect 27% of them to eat alone. But maybe it's more, maybe it's less. So would it be unusual if it was as low as 20%? Well, that is our population proportion is 0.27. We have a sample size of 150. And if we're looking for it, what if it is it unusual we're going to find what is the probability that to, of getting a sample proportion of less than 0.2 so the way we're going to do this is we are going to actually treat it like this this normal curve here kind of the um, um that central limit theorem but for proportions so first let's check to see if we can apply this here so is n times p times 1 minus p at least 10 and so you can see I have n 150 times p 0.27 times 1 minus 0.27, and yes, that is at least 10. Um, we also need to have our sample size less than or equal to 5% of the population. Um, there are about 10,000 ECC students, so 150 is definitely less than 5%. Um, all right, so we need the district in order to find that probability that p hat is less than 0.2 we need the distribution of p hat so the mean of p hat is the same as the population proportion and then the standard deviation using that formula is and notice here's again those number of decimal places i put four digits there the, that um 0 0.03625 um four digits yeah this zero is important but it it doesn't really add digits of um, computation here, so I have we'll call them significant digits. So I went down to four there because I'm I'm going to be dividing by it eventually when I do um, the normal calculator. So if we look at this probability, what we're going to do now is we're going to find the probability and treat it like a normal probability with this mean and this standard deviation. And so I just took a screenshot here of the normal calculator, mean 0.27, standard deviation, that 0 0.03625, and so we get about 0 0.0267. So yeah, if only 20% of our sample uh, eats alone, then our population is either a really rare sample, so maybe we got a really rare sample, but it's actually very unusual, so what's probably true is that ECC students eat alone less than um, the American population does. So it, again, if our value ended up at 0.2, the likelihood of being over here is so small. Whoa! Oh, that was my video. It was finished producing there. Sorry about that. The likelihood of being over here is so small that our mean is probably not 0.27. You know, our proportion is probably closer over here. That's what we're saying there. All right, let's do another one. Um, American Cancer so Society says that between the ages of 40 and 59, about a little under 4% of women develop breast cancer. 
So what if we have a random sample of 539 year old women without breast cancer? What's the probability that more than 5% of them will develop breast cancer within the next 20 years? So we have that 3.86, that 500 and the more than 5%, those are the key things we're going to look at here. So the 3.86, that is our population proportion. Uh, the sample size here is 500 and we're looking for what is the probability that more than 5% will develop cancer, breast cancer. So that's the probability that the sample proportion is more than 5%. Well, let's do our check here. n times p times 1 minus p, and that's 18.6. So that is at least 10. So we can approximate this with the normal distribution. Um, sample size of 500, I don't know how many 39-year-old women there are. There's 330 million people in the United States, probably, I'm trying to think of what, 1% of that would be 3 million, so, but there's more women have died by the time there, so it's not like it's 1 to 100, right, there's a lot less 100 year olds than 1 year olds, and so it's probably about 9, 10 million 39 year old women, so anyway, we're fine. So, um, definitely not, um, it's not more than 5% of the population. Okay, so we are good. We can do the normal approximation. So the mean should be the same as the population mean. The standard deviation is that square root of p times 1 minus p all over n. And that is a point zero zero eight six one five. Again, notice four digits. Yes, six decimal places. Now, these, these two zeros are important, of course. They tell us that we start in the thousandth place but they don't give any additional computing precision. So we need, we need four digits there at least. And so now we're going to say that the probability of a proportion being at least 5%, that at least, that more than 5% of them uh, get breast cancer, is approximately equal to the normal variable with this mean and this standard deviation. Again, here's a screenshot from StatCrunch, so about, about a 9% chance of that happening. Whew. All right, probably going to need to watch this video a couple times. We'll do some examples in class as well. Uh, but I have one more special case I want to talk about. So let's go back to Candace Parker. What's the probability that she makes, we'll say, 18 or more of her free throws out of 20? So she typically makes 80%. What's the probability that she makes 18 or more? So we could, that's essentially saying 18 out of 20 would be uh, 90%. So what's the probability that she makes 90% or more if her true chance of making it is 80%? Well, let's check here. So p hat here is 90%. Let's do our check to see if we can um, do the normal distribution. So n times 1 minus p. And you can see there, uh oh, not greater than 10. So all of this is out of the water now. We can't, we cannot use that normal approximation. Um, you might remember from the original slide way back at the beginning that when n was 20, it wasn't really symmetric. It, you can't approximate it with the normal distribution. So then what do we do? Well, what we can do is we can actually go back and just say, well, this is a binomial distribution. Now we're making some assumptions. We're assuming she always has a probability of 80%. So if she misses one, it's still 80% chance of the next one. Now Candace is a pro. She's been doing this for a long time. Her free throw probability is probably pretty constant by now. So I think that's a safe assumption, though, you know, I could see an argument against that. But we could just do the binomial distribution. So I have a screenshot of that. I just did the binomial distribution. n is 20, p is 0.8. And what's the probability of making greater than or equal to 18? And there you go. So a lot of these sample proportions, we're using the normal probability to kind of approximate it. But they're really based on the binomial distribution. Uh, and if you can phrase it correctly, you got to be careful. But if you can phrase it correctly, you can usually rephrase it in terms of a binomial calculation as well. Okay, that is it. Um, yeah, that's it. We'll do some more examples uh, in class on these, and hopefully that will help clarify. This is a very challenging uh, chapter, both of this 8.2 and then the previous one, 8.1. A lot of abstract theory there, so hopefully you'll get started early enough where you can come with questions and we can talk about them in class.